Okay, so recently there was another Serious Heroes AMA session with the co-founder and game producer Roman Pawlowski. In this one, he explained some details on the game development and its progress and also replied to the questions of the community. So honestly, it was like a lot. So we've grabbed just the best for you guys in this Serious Heroes AMA session recap. So who's taking decisions on launching the module investment and how staking is working and why this brand new game, Xena, would attract just millions of users. Let's find out together in this video. Okay, the AMA session was divided into two parts. The future updates and the questions from the community, including ones about the game's functionality, quality and future plans. Roman also reminded the users that the website was updated and now the team is working on the mobile version of the website. And after that, a major marketing campaign will be finally launched. Right now, the team is working hard on the battler, the strategy and the shooter. These games should form an entire ecosystem. So like some games are more attractive, others, well, maybe less, but after all, they're building an entire system. So people can choose, play, and move among the games. And that's utility. That's why the team has to prioritize. So put some tasks forward and others behind. Now, as we see, the main task for them is to turn the prototype into a fully functional game. And this all happens, well, thanks to all of us users. Besides, right now, the team is testing marketing strategies and checking how to make the most effective use of the budget. There is not much mobile traffic, so it takes just 25%, and that's why a mobile version of the website is crucial. So after that, Roman moved on to Xena, and this is the first game launched by the Sidus Gates publishing company. The main goal of this game, well, besides being fun to play, is to make the token value grow. It is very addictive, and it is already launched. Besides, this game already shows some impressive numbers. For example, it has over 48% of retention rate. This means that from 100% of users who came to the game, 48 came back the next day. And these are very good metrics, believe me. Players will produce different assets, sell and trade them, and also earn from it. So the more games are launched, the more roles inside the metaverse will be created and the more utility will be provided, so the more players can monetize. I think this sounds pretty solid as players are considered to be partners in Cities Heroes. The first question was about the marketplace, like when the issue with buying items on the marketplace will be fixed. Okay, so Roman said that they're working on it and there are two critical issues and within the next week, all the issues shall be fixed already. Next one's about Mutagenitor and whether there are any updates on the utility and details on implementing parts to the Mutagenitor. Here, Roman explained that the team is going to work on the Mutagenitor ASAP, but until the users see the Mutagenitor value, they shall first understand the value of replicants. Okay, I see here that people wanted to learn more about staking. They said that staking 3.0 is evolving very slowly and they wanted to know whether there are any plans to accelerate it. The answer is that the only way to accelerate it will basically get new users. And this is what the team is working on at this very moment. Then there was a question about rolling back of ARK investment. So why did the team decide to roll it back? Okay, so Roman explained that half of the users don't have access to this module, so it was not fair in relation to them. So the team didn't like it too, but it has to be honest to all users to keep their trust. Okay, the next block of questions was regarding the future of the project. So are Cities and Senate tokens will be used in all the games, or just new tokens will be introduced at some point. I see here that Roman confirmed that Cities and Senate will be the base, but there are a lot of opportunities to collaborate with other communities, and yes, it may result in adding some new other tokens. 
However, this is not 100% yet, he added, so let's just stay tuned. Another question was about the licenses. So new licenses are going to be issued in one year and people wanted to clarify whether the old licenses will be still valid. Here, Roman reminded us once more that every license has some rules. So it's like a job. So it can be sold or used, but the use is based on some rules and conditions. So if a user makes some abuse, the license can be lost. But if there are no abuses and if rules are respected, of course, the license is permanent. One more question was about the city staking, whether it's going to be extended and if yes, whether the community will be notified before the 9th of December. So the response is pretty short. There are no plans to extend staking. Okay, so back to the topic of licenses. People want some clarification about bank licenses and whether it is going to be used on the central station only or everywhere. Roman said that this is a special license. So it's going to enable user to provide services on selling local currencies and only they can do it like transfer currencies from one game to another say like Xena to another game currency for example users who earn some resources on Xena want to swap or sell them they can do it in the bank only so the more games are there the higher the quality and the value of bank license what happened when the character reaches 400,000 points, therefore steps up to level two. And are there any rewards or upgrades for that? Roman explained that there will be no upgrades, but rewards definitely will be. It means that the user has worked hard for cities and of course deserves to be rewarded. How will royalties be calculated from the first 10 games? So they will be accumulated and once the gates is completed, they will make an update to pay out all the royalties. The next question is about the scholarship. So will they be available on Xena? Roman said that yes, for sure, the base will be the same for all games. Additionally, some special features will be implemented in every new game and those features will be available only in this game. Users also asked if all game modes will have different races. So how will these races be represented? So in a form of unreleased or somehow else? Roman clarified that every game has its own NFT collection. So in the case of Xena, there are Xenians who are different from other races. So every new planet will have its own race with its own skins, values, and attributes. But these NFTs can be played within all the games within the ecosystem. Okay, so moving on again to Zena in Dutch auction. Roman explained that the Dutch auction is going to be held in December and its main idea is to put in there 6,000 NFTs. You know, lottery tickets and each ticket consisting of 80% of legendary heroes, 20% of epic heroes and 72% of common heroes. The starting price will be one ETH or maybe some value in Citus tokens and will be dropping by to zero. Roman pointed out that Xena Hero will not be the only asset. There will also be the land sale. So those who buy a lottery ticket instantly with a starting price will get a landing pod with resources inside. These resources will be useful for shuttles and also they will get different types of gems. However, these resources aren't there instantly though. So people have to use the lamp plot, build their something to mine these resources. However, the date when this option will be available will be announced later. Well, hopefully next week. And by the way, the Genesis collection owners will get an airdrop of NFTs to access Xena. So what about the lore and the story behind Xena? Are there more details about the gameplay and level design? And will it be inspired by RTS? Okay, so this one is interesting. So Roman said that there was an asteroid that crashed into planet and brought some bacteria there. And the bacteria filled the planet with dust and thus they cannot live there anymore. However, bacteria also bring useful resources 
such as oil, which serves to move faster between different planets. So these resources on Xena are used to build shuttles. And Xenians operate drones from orbit to find and get the Xena resources. So the game is almost completed and most likely, and hopefully, we can play it already this December. And also, Roman promised that it will not be just a prototype, but a fully functional game. So, looking forward to it. Okay, so users also asked whether the scholars will get a Xena card for a rented Genesis collection. Roman said that the team has to think about this question, and only then they can provide the reply. Next, what will happen exactly on the 14th of December regarding Xena? Roman replied that there will be a big offline event to which the team will invite VCs who have already invested in the game and are interested to invest more. And during this event, the team plans to conduct an auction. But it will happen only if all details are finalized. So if not, the auction will be moved on for some days later. And by the way, here's an interesting quote from this blog. So we are planning to make a cyber sport event. This strategy is interesting not only as a blockchain of P2E games, but also very addictive for esportsmen because it is very interactive and it is extremely valuable for streaming. So we want to show them our future and Xena is a part of our future. And with it, I mean not only investors, but all of us. This gameplay is better than a strategy game that we get on a mobile device. Okay, so let's proceed with like general questions from this AMA session. Okay, some guy said that the battler activity has decreased recently and with three new games incoming, there is concern that players will pivot to Xena as F2P mobile and then shooter and tower defense. So like any plans to incentivize activity in battler? Roman clarified that Battler, like any other planet, has unique resources. So to make investment, to produce some assets, users will have either to go to Battler or to buy those resources on the marketplace. Besides, new features will be implemented in the game. So now, like Battler is just a prototype and to finish this game, they will need like approximately half a year or something. So I'm pretty sure that there will be lots of stuff to do in there. The next question was about who chooses the day and time of investment and what is the guideline? And so Roman simply explained that he does as general producer because he's trying to organize events to incentivize the inflow of resources. And also he invited users and investors to discuss details and ideas. So for sure, he has the final word on this. Okay, the next one, what awaits us on New Year's Eve? So he promised a very special event as always, but hasn't disclosed any details for now. So he just mentioned some kind of an eardrop or something. So, well, quite a mystery box so far. Okay, guilds questions on their way. Will we be able to generate and sell guilds merch, for example, like some brand stuff on the marketplace? So like it was said, Status Team is planning to launch some features for creators. It will be a role in the metaverse that will be regulated with the licenses. This will be available for all creators, companies, well, not only guilds. Okay, so here goes some rapid fire blitz questions at the end of this recap. So let's go. When cancel or DAO? The first step was on voting during selfie event. Next step, quarter one, 2023. When Space Shuttle 2 boxes will be added to the marketplace? So the response was not soon. They will appear only when current holders can get a profit from them. When 1 million USD price pool is mentioned on the new website? So it's a secret. When are licenses on the marketplace? So for sure they will be there, but supposedly we can expect them during the closest month. And finally, when with Joel's? So it was delayed with the hope to complete it in December, but still the final deadline isn't known yet. Okay, so it looks like as time goes on, Cetus Heroes is becoming more and more interesting and also vast. Like we have an entire ecosystem right now with many games and fun stuff inside and hopefully we can try it out together 
really soon. Well, preferably this month. So let's just keep looking forward to it together with you guys. So again, thanks for watching. Don't forget to drop a like under this video, follow the channel, comment down below, and let's see you in the next episodes.